tribe, welcome to the HGDC, HG Designs Crochet channel. I'm Heather, your host, and I'm 28 and I live in the United Kingdom. If you are a new viewer, hi, hello and welcome, and if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and spending this time with me. Today's slightly different in that I'm dedicating today's vlog to the HGDC Scrap Ball Challenge. Now, the HGDC Scrap Ball Challenge is a little thing that I devised and I want to tell you all about it. So get yourself comfy and be prepared to learn something amazing. The HGDC Scrap Ball Challenge is basically using up all of your scrap yarn to make magic cakes like this which is spilling out its guts. So the HDDC Scrap Ball Challenge is something that I start on Instagram. It's currently got 129 posts, if you search under the tag, and it was named by Nay Nay Makes on Instagram. And sort of 2017, um, next, last year sometime, I wanted to have a way of using up all of my scraps, my leftovers. Um, I had a lot of sort of single skeins of DK that I'd used bits of for a blanket and I had sort of 80 grams, 50 grams, nothing that I could really make a massive project out of, but a lot that was just sat that I wanted to use. And so what I did is I gathered together a huge amount of yarn bath. So you know that stuff that the yarn tangles at the bottom of a project bag. Um, like kind of like all ends like like this i took all of that i took all of my scraps that i you know like you end up with lengths like this from a project that you don't need because you finished the project but then you don't really want to throw away because you can do something with it right and then i took all of like my leftovers my partial skeins um maybe some that i didn't really want to use in a project per se but needed using up and what I do is I magic knot them together and it creates yarn whirls like this. Now, this has been caked up so that you can see all of the colours, but I do have pictures which I'm going to put in of when it's just in a huge ball. Now, let me grab my notes because there's a lot to tell you about this. Um, I use the magic knot as I said, and I'll insert a video of me using the magic knot. So what I do is I get two lengths of yarn and you knot them around each other in a way that then means when you pull it tight that knot is indestructible and you snip off the ends. So if I grab two bits of yarn, I've got glitter purple and this green. And what you would do is that's your first length, this is your other length. And what I would do is I would knot the green around the purple to start with, like so. So I've knotted green around purple. Come on camera, come on hands. And then you want to knot purple around green. That way they're in an infinity embrace so can you see the way it's looped because I've got green around purple, purple around green and then a pull and that's now created an amazing knot. 
then nothing is going to break. And then what I do with that knot is I snip the ends and then that becomes a join in my yarn that I can't break. And then I just wind up how much I've got and then I get to my other two ends and then I knot them around each other. So magic knot, amazing little device. I mainly crochet and when I crochet into things you cannot see the knot, it is hidden in the design. I haven't knit using these but I think it would be absorbed quite well in certain stitches. Um, I've also seen people fuse them together using um, the needle felting gizmo, I don't know what that's called, the needle, fel the needle felting gizmo and then that way you can't you can't see where they fuse um, like there's not a knot all the fibers just fuse together so that could be an alternative for knitting and I will give that a try so this 120 grams of yarn sat right here was just scraps and partial skeins that I didn't have a use for and then out of that I have made myself this amazing whirl now We've all seen the whirls or the swirls or the magic cakes, whatever they're called, in the shops. And they they cost so much money. Like, they look beautiful. And don't get me wrong, I have some in my stash. But they're like £6 plus, depending on where you buy them from. And I made my own out of my scraps. So I made unusable yarn into amazing yarn at no cost. And it's dropping its bits everywhere. No, it's heavily pink because this is me and I'm all about pink at the moment. There's a lot of glitter in there. Um, so I've shown you how to magic knot. I've shown you how I've joined them. I've told you that I use yarn bath, scraps, partial skeins. Um, there's quite a little bit, piddly bits within there that I can go through and I could make more out of. Um, say for example, if I'm weaving in ends on a project and I end up with tails like that, that will all go in there. Um, and sometimes friends will give me leftovers because they don't want to use them, but they know that it could have a use. So why not? Then you've got even more yarn. Um, just checking my notes again. The reason that I love doing the magic balls, so the HDDC scrap board challenge is that it's stash busting because you dive into these pots and you can see quite a lot of single skeins in there and within that you create enough yarn to make an entire project. So going into projects that I have used them on, I've got two blankets, the one you can see behind me and this one. So this one is called Scraptastic, it's the first one I ever made, um, it's Darcy's blanket, it's covered in dog hair, I'm not going to apologise. This is just a um, striped blanket using double crochet. My gosh, it's fluffier than I thought. Um, and it just used up all scraps imaginable. It's absolutely massive. It was on my bed, but he adopted it. So it's now his and it lives in his bed. Um, this has been washed and it came out perfectly fine. And it definitely needs another wash. Um, what I also love about these is within these stripes, there's all these different yarns that I used in other projects, which is where the scraps come from. Um, and so when I look at these stripes, I can point out projects that I've done. I know that's in my Lark's Foot blanket. I know that I made a crazy um, cushion cover once out of this variegated neon stuff. Um, there is Lots of pinks which went into the distraction blanket. If you go to the blanket stack vlog after this, you'll see what blankets I'm on about. And also, I can remember starting this blanket at Christmas 2017, a few days after actually, and I did this massive red chunk. So it holds a lot of memories. That sort of single bed, single person size, which is solely for Darcy and it's very fluffy so you can just do a simple stripe and again the knots are really absorbed into that and you can't tell and it has a really nice effect because it's scraps 
it looks like it all belongs together so there's like a cohesion throughout the blanket which is really really good and I think I can't remember where have I weighed that blanket that blanket is quite weighty and to think that that's all scraps and that it was just a stash busting exercise um, that I got all of that yarn out of the bottom of a tub because in effect that was just yarn bath and that I've made an entire blanket out of it is really really cool. I was going to border it and I did buy some pink to do that but because Darcy adopted it I didn't I just didn't bother going ahead with that but you could border it and you could use scraps or you could use if you've got a lot of one colour left over. Um, I would make another one like that but I've already made one and how many blankets does a girl need? So I went on and I made this one. This is my, I don't think this one got a name. I originally started making it for my cousin but she decided it was too busy for her uh, and it is quite busy. This again was just using scrap yarn um, leftover skeins. It's really pretty and I think it would be really nice for a young girl to be honest. Um, again it's got the glitter yarns in it, it's got all different colours and not a lot of these were used in other projects. I did just go buy a huge amount of yarn on a yarn binge when for some reason and I bought lots of single skeins of 100 grams and then I got back and I thought right how am I going to make a project out of I don't know 20 different colours of yarn and so I decided to put it in this now it just needs finishing which all my projects do um, it's sort of more a knee blanket or a lap blanket or for a toddler at the moment but that's another idea. So that's just using the Attic 24 granny stripe. And I think it looks really, really effective, really, really nice. Um, and it is really uniform and really, really neat, which I love about it. Now, I took this one with me when we went to Skegness and stayed in a caravan and I got pretty much everything you can see here done in like a week in a caravan because I can granny stripe without looking and then I put it down and I've never touched it again so if you're looking for a simple way to make some blankets I would definitely recommend that you do the HDDC scrap ch ball challenge because it's stash busting you can use what you've already got um, I think we're all guilty of wanting to start a project but feeling we don't have the yarn for it so I created a project that uses the yarn that we've got. You can use any yarn to make something like this. Um, then other ideas I've got for the HGDC scrap board challenge because I want to bring it back to life. Um, when I looked through my analytics on my Instagram this hashtag's got some of the most interaction so I wanted to bring that back because obviously people really enjoyed it. So in terms of ideas for projects that I've got, if you want to join in, I have made a granny square, started to make this granny square where you just go round and round. It's not for everyone because as you can see the rounds merge but some people like it, some people don't. I did start a corner to corner blanket but I don't really enjoy them but the effect did look really really good. So any basic stitch looks really, really good because the yarn is so colourful that it adds the texture and the interest. And also, when you work on these projects, you just think, oh, I'll see what the next colour is, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And it makes you crochet at a rapid pace, and you get it done so, so quick. As I said, this one was done in like, I think it was in the caravan for four days or five nights, something like that. And I wasn't even putting in huge amounts of time. It just grew because I couldn't wait to get to the next colour. So definitely a quick project as well. And it's so mindful because you don't have to think really because it's a repetitive stitch. So it's definitely enjoyable. So never ending granny. Um, I've also tried corner to corner. I've done stripes. I 
have thought about doing. Now let me get it to show you. This cardigan is in the design process and as you'll have seen from my vlog, it's got this giant granny square on the back. I think that would look amazing worked up in the yarn using the HDDC scrap board challenge and then you could then put that through here that would look really good and you could also put it through on this so incorporate the scrap ball into the sleeves and into this um, I think that would look really really good and as I said I'm going to make this I'm going to make this solid you could easily do it in the um, scrap ball yarn just to get that effect all the way through there so there's definitely garments out there that you can use this for you can just substitute in any pattern if it calls for DK yarn you can substitute this in there not this this you can substitute that in there but if you want that effect if you want it to look you know quite put together I think something like this will carry it really really well and I'm actually going to make one um, again as I said the only thing that some people might struggle with is the bleed over on, on the granny square you know because you, there's a couple of rounds there with the same colour and it doesn't quite give the effect so I might work this as a granny stripe because granny stripe will carry it really really well so imagine that as this that will look great and also as a knitting project I think using the HDDC scrap board challenge balls in bri brioche I said it right in brioche would be really really cool um, it would look good and I've also got a project in mind for that once I've taught myself the stitch so that's the HDDC scrap board challenge in a really quick quick um, wrap up you can make amazing projects out of it and if you go through the hashtag on Instagram you'll see the other projects that other people have made and then they've tagged um, there's a lot of blankets on there but I would like to now start putting it into garments as that's the where that's where I'm headed with HGDC um, if you want to make yourself a yarn ball and then um, use the tag so I can find you on Instagram that would be amazing if you are part of Patreon, um, once the um, Facebook group's up and running, put it in there and use the tag as well so that we can find it when we search. Um, what I want to do, because I used to show off what people were making every Sunday, I want to be able to put them in my stories. So there's been um, a couple of tags since I started speaking about HDDC Scrap Ball Challenge on here. Um, and I'd like to put those in my stories on Sundays just to show the tribe what we've all been up to. Um, and I'd like to just incorporate it a bit more because I really enjoyed using it and I'm going back to using it. So if I can get you lot stash busting, stash diving, scrap busting and using up some of the skeins that you don't really know what to do and making amazing projects such as these, that's great. So. Happy making, get tagging, and I'll see you again soon.